and welcome to the podcast. I have no idea what episode we're on, but welcome back. It's been a long time coming. Um, I'm Emma and I dye, I naturally dye yarn here in Northern Ireland. And uh, yeah, I'll put my website below, I guess. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> um, okay, so since it's been quite a long time, I do have quite a few things to show you, which is very fun. A few of you might have been watching my Vlogmas episodes, which means you'll probably have seen a bit of a run through of my works in progress. Um, but there's a few things, a few finished objects, um, more than one, you'll be really surprised to hear. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my knitting dreams if it doesn't get too dark, because it's really dark gets dark so quickly and I thought maybe I would take you on a little stash tour with me if it doesn't get dark although it may well get too dark and I might have to do that another day so but that's fine so right well I'm just gonna get started into my finished objects the first one and the one that I finished oh I should maybe say what I'm wearing because someone will ask me this is the Jason flood pattern spearheads it's knit in the alifo sloppy i don't know what the colors are because i actually didn't knit it it was knitted by um a, the lovely anna of lana tricot hope i got that right i'll put that here um she has a lovely shop in grenoble i think or maybe it's just an online shop i'm not sure but uh she reached out and asked me did i want this because she didn't wear it and she thought we'd be the same size she was so right i love this so much and i wear it so much it's so warm so anyway first fin finished object is the hansel hap and um, this is a pattern by gudrun johnson the yarn is jameson and smith the wool brokers um i have made an instagram post um about each of the colors and i think i have also got it on a ravelry page I had a bit left of every colour and I loved using their yarn, it was so nice and um, knitting the actual shawl part of this was very fast and it normally obviously would be flatter than this but I've been wearing it for some time now. From here to here was very fast but see this border? This was really slow. It's quite fiddly because you're picking up a stitch and then knitting like going back and forth was hasn't i've not really done a border like this before so it was very interesting and i did enjoy that and i think if it wasn't for that it would have been too easy for me um so yeah i wear this a lot and it's really warm because the wool brokers yarn is so nice and warm so i love that next thing is my kume cardigan now this is a pattern by vanessa Pelisa. I started this some time ago and I was like, should I keep it for myself? Should I give it away? Um, and then I had my mother-in-law try it on and um, she liked it. So I decided to give it to her. It's knitted out of my natural sock DK and it's dyed with nails. And uh, I had quite a bit of this in the shop at one point and so yeah, this is the one where the stick went wrong. So I'll just show you what's happening with that right at the moment. So I have the snap fastenings on it, but you can't just pull. You have to like stick your nail in between to unpop them so they don't pull off. So right now I'm waiting for tape to come so that I can sew the tape on. And so what happened with this was I thought I could do a steak with a knit facing, which I looked up a tutorial for, but I only had a five stitch steak, which only left one and a half stitches to do the knit facing with, which wasn't going to work because on the knit facing I had knit it five stitches. So I would have needed a 10 stitch steak section to do the knit facing so anyway but i got really impatient and just cut anyway shouldn't have done that so yeah it could have unraveled at that point however vanessa told me she was like 
don't worry, just get a, a needle to felt it with, like a needle felt a needle and a, a sponge and, and go over the edging of it, this bit, um, and needle felt it. Then she said, um, basically just do the crochet reinforcement, which is what I should have done in the first place. So that's what you can see here. And I was able to do that with no problem after it was needle felted. And just a little piece of information. This is the worst spun yarn of mine. And I was still able to needle felt it. It's obviously non super wash, so that it works quite well. But because it was worst it spun, I wondered how well it would felt. And it, it did felt enough to hold it to get the crochet reinforcement in. So after I had did all that, I picked up and knit it for the um, the edging bands, and then I ordered a, a. I actually ended up ordering a velvet tape, which I'm going to put in here, and these snap fastenings. Now I have to say, the snap fastenings, they didn't confuse me, but they just don't look great, do they? I had to use a finer yarn to get it through the thing, so it's a slightly different colour. Um, but yeah, I just don't know how. I, I don't know if my mother in law will remember to like put her finger in between each one to, or whether she'll just go like this and the whole thing will come apart someday. Because they are quite like. not tight, but they're quite. like they have a good. So yeah, I'm almost finished this. I'm going to give it to her for Christmas. She's already tried it on, so we know that it fits. I've tried it on me and we're pretty much the same size. So it's going to fit her, which I'm very excited about. And I hope she really likes it. It was actually quite a faff to finish off after I made the error with the steak. Otherwise, I think it would have been so easy to finish the steak. And I will definitely be steaking again. It hasn't put me off at all. Um, in fact, I really enjoyed it, so I will definitely be sticking again, but with a crochet reinforcement this time. <laughs> so, yeah, I will have a bit of natural sock in the shop, but by the time you see this, it could well be sold out. So, um, that is that. I also knitted these quick, quick fingerless mittens. Um, they look, they're not very good. The thumb is absolutely terrible. But I just was wearing these because basically I'm knitting the songbird mittens. But A, I'm really slow at it. And B, I'm not going to have finished it for a while. And I just needed something that I could wear when I was walking the dog. And I just used some leftover Shetland and alpaca. And I made these just to wear in the meantime. And... Um, yeah, they're not, they're not good, like, but I didn't use a pattern, I just made it up, that's why they're not good. Um, so yeah, they're something, but they're not great, let's face it. So fair enough. Another finished object is I knitted a little Sunday sweater for my niece. She is four and she is so cute. And I decided to knit this for her. Um, I knitted, this is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I knitted this in my BFL Massim Iron Weight Peony colourway. Peony colourway. And I feel really bad saying this, but I actually did use a strand of mohair silk, which I generally try not to use um, because it's not locally uh, sourced. And I'm trying to get all my yarn to be like locally sourced, but I, I like, I mean, I, I guess I'm doing pretty well. And I'm not going to panic if the odd thing I make is not 100% locally made. But yeah, I don't stock this in the shop, but I did order five skeins from my supplier um, because I want to naturally dye it. So the whole thing was naturally dyed for my little niece. And I also dyed some for my nephew because I thought, well, if I'm buying five, I'll have to use it up. So it's really, really cute. This is a very, very addictive pattern. I have to say, I knitted it in a few days, maybe. Um, 
and she's she's only two but I had to knit age four and I thought I might as well because it will fit her for longer. Um, I had a little bit of a thing when it came to the end, I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> I ran out of yarn here and I didn't have any. The iron weight yarn that I dyed up was not, it was not the right shade of peony. <laughs> So I dyed up some DK and doubled it uh, just to finish off the cuff. I mean, it's a little bit different colour, but I don't think you can really tell. Not unless you know you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice. So yeah, I really enjoyed knitting this a lot. So much so that I would consider knitting one for myself. Although I'd probably knit it out of Lope and the silk mohair maybe, although I don't think I have enough left for that, so I might get some whistle bear, which is local, well, it's made in England and grown in England. But yeah, I just thought this was so cute. Um, and I also have a little pattern lined up for my new nephew, which I'm very excited to knit for. So that is all my finished objects. Um, I have three small, uh, acquisitions. I don't normally buy yarn because, well, I just don't. I mean, I have so much in my stash already and um, I just really don't need any more. And if there's something I need for a specific project, I dye it up and then I use it straight away. Um, but I, yeah, I'd like to take you on a little tour of my stash or wool pantry or whatever you want to call it, just because like, I don't know, I had, I basically didn't really buy much yarn. I think I bought like maybe three, well, if we include this, five skeins of yarn this year, five or six. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that again this year just so I can get down my stash a little bit so I don't buy willy nilly. I buy so that I can buy a little bit more mindfully um for each project that I want to knit and I only get so many in advance so that I don't feel that there's so much yarn that I can't really concentrate on what I want to make and I also want to be more mindful about what I put in my wardrobe if it's something that I'm going to like long term or longer term um I mean, I'm, you generally do do that anyway when you're knitting something because you put so much time and effort into it. And also for me, sourcing things locally, that takes a long time even. I'm glad I produced my own yarns because that makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just thinking more carefully about areas of my wardrobe that I'd like to enhance or plug a little hole in or yeah. So I got two things. I got, I was in that sh shop in Belfast called Sostrine Green and they had some cotton. And I just thought dishcloths are actually a thing that I really need to knit. I have no interest in knitting, but um, I'm going to knit myself some dishcloths because I just, it's such a pleasure to use a knitted dishcloth. I just thought, yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get through knitting it. I mean they're they're tiny, they'll take like an hour. Like I may as well I may as well make myself some. This one is organic cotton, actually. I don't know if they do colorways. It's so it's also oak oak ecotex certified. This one is um fifty percent bamboo, fifty percent cotton. And it is not organic or Ogatex certified. Um, and one purchase that I did make, I think I seen Alex Collins um, talking about this in her podcast, the fibre company Amble, which is their new, no, oh no, it's recycled nylon is in it. Yeah. So um, it is 70% wool, 20% alpaga and 10% recycled nylon. It is, and they it can be washed in the machine, which I thought was quite interesting. So I just thought, 
This could be really interesting to try and contrast with my natural sock. I'm also knitting a pair of, you'll see them in a minute, um, socks out of Whistlebear's Cuthbert sock. So it'll be interesting to see all three and how they wear compared to each other. Um, yeah, and this is non super wash. They created this special anti shrinking easy wash treatment um, that doesn't use the same like harsh chemicals as super wash. So I just thought, yeah, this could be really interesting to try. Obviously, it's merino and, and alpago. Uh, alpago, that's not what I think. Alpaga. <laughs> uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how this wears and. Yeah, so I might knit myself a little pair of socks over Christmas, see how that goes. So that was my three things I bought. So I'm curious to try particularly the sock yarn, but I think I'm going to get a lot of joy out of the dishcloth. So on to whips, I think is a good idea. I will start with, look at my lovely Harriet Wildwood stitches bag. Love it. Knitting some well this is from last year's advent calendar i made a magic knot ball and i took one and had it along with christmas lights colorway this is on my natural sock four ply i am using two millimeter needles however for me to get the correct gauge for socks i should be using 1.75 millimeter needles but Ah, A, I couldn't find the needles. B, I remember when I was knitting with them, I wasn't enjoying it because it was so tight. And I just thought, okay, I'm going to knit it on two millimetre needles, see how that wears. And then, yeah, once I find a pair of needles that I'd really like a pair like this, but in 1.75 millimetre needles. Um, these are wooden. I think these are... I don't know what these are, Knit Pro Symphony. And um, yeah, so I'm just knitting a wee pair of socks here and I have so many sock whips. I don't know if you've seen on that Vlogmas episode where I did a tour of all my works in progress. I have so many. A little Buclivy pottery stitch marker. So I'm knitting these. This is the Christmas lights colorway. This is all sold out now. I did I did this in November, so people would have it for Christmas. So we'll put that away. That's the first pair of socks. Um, the second pair of socks is the Cuthbert socks by Whistle Bear that I was telling you about. It's in a little Daughter of a Shepherd wool flower bag. So these socks are no nylon, no super wash, worsted spun, uh, mohair and Wensley deal, I believe. Or is it just mohair? Not sure, I don't have the ball band. Doing a three by one rib, um, not really using pattern. I took the heel off the Rita socks, kind of. I didn't do it exactly the same, but it's similar. I think it's called a Dutch heel. Um, I asked Danny what it was, but and she told me it was a Dutch heel, so yeah, so I'm at the toe of this now and if you watch my Vlogmas episode you'll know I was not even at the heel like a few days ago, so I'm really proud of myself and I'm really enjoying this yarn, it's very luxurious, I think it'll be very warm, I hope it doesn't slip down my foot, um, but so far I, you know, I'm really enjoying knitting with this, I'm using these needles can't remember what they are. Are these knit pros as well? I'm not sure. Zing, maybe? And it's in my little Alex Collins needle cosy. So that's in there. Next up uh, is what's in here. Let's see. Oh, my Rita socks. So yes, again, talked about this in the Vlogmas episode. I didn't realise I had a full sock knit. This is the Rita socks, the pattern... It's a pattern by Danny of Little Bobbins. And like I said in the episode, <laughs> in the Vlogmas episode, I just take needles out like if I need them and I'm in the middle of knitting a pair of socks. This would terrify some people, but... And then, yeah, I just go back to it and stick them in when I'm ready to start the project again. This is in my natural sock four ply. Uh, this is... 
a summer colorway. <laughs> not helpful, sorry. It's not climbing with walled garden, walled garden. So it's kind of pink and purple. So you can see how it knits up there. So over Christmas, my aim is to finish these socks, finish and finish those two pairs of socks. So hopefully I'll have three pairs of socks to start me into 2021. I'd be very happy if that happened. These have been languishing for some time now. So, and these are in my little Olanua bag. She is a local weaver and she made these bags and I just absolutely love it. Next up, we have my songbird mittens, which I have not even made any progress with. I was worried that they were gonna to be too big, but I've tried them on again recently and they were all good. The reason I haven't knitted on this on these is because I have to concentrate and I just haven't had the mental capacity to look at every row and to put off every row. But I think the finished product is going to be amazing, so I'm going to stick with them. I had to go down a lot of needle sizes. Uh, I'm on 2.25 millimeter needles, and this is my limited edition Cheviot, which is there might be one skein in the shop if it's not sold out by the time. But yeah, the bulk of this was sold in the summer, so I don't, I won't have any more of this ever. I don't think. Um, but all my limited edition yarns are basically the same spec, so you could knit this in one of the other limited edition yarns. So yeah, I thought for a while when I was going through my whips, I'd maybe rip this out, but no, definitely not. I think it's going to be lovely. And this is in a bag by Woolen Flower. Next up <laughs> is uh, my Nurtured Sweater by Andrea Moiry. It's in my Hannah Lisa Haferkamp bag that I dyed, naturally dyed. Uh, this is knitted in my BFL Massim Iron Weight Mustard Green colorway. And I have really worked on this since the last time I recorded an episode. So much so that I'm actually on the yoke. Can you believe it? I am so happy with, about this. This is, I don't know, the first time I knitted this, it went really fast, like the one I knitted for myself, but I'm knitting this one for my husband. And it seems deadly slow. I don't know if it's a stitch pattern or what, but now I'm on the yoke and there's some decreasing. I think that'll make it more interesting so it should go a bit quicker. And now that I've almost finished my mother-in-law's cardigan, I think I'll make better progress with this. I wanna really, I would love, love, love to have it done at least in the Christmas holidays so that he can wear it. And he's quite keen to get on with it. Get on with it. He's quite keen to wear it. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically I didn't really make many modifications apart from just knitting the body quite a bit longer and the sleeves probably longer um, because he's got a very long torso but there's no like shaping around in it so there's no reason why it shouldn't fit him as well. Like, um, so yeah, I think it should be absolutely fine. I've measured him, I've measured it, I've measured jumpers that he wears and it all seems good. So um, I can't see me needing to make any other modifications, just basically knitting it longer because there's no shaping in it anyway. So, so far I think I've used like seven skeins, which is quite a lot, but he's long. He's not tall, but he's long, if you know what I mean has a long body so pleased with my progress on this next oh that's everything okay i just wanted to talk to you briefly about um gauge swatches because <coughs> excuse me um i absolutely hate knitting administration i don't enjoy using ravelry i don't enjoy doing gauge swatches i don't enjoy making them neat and tidy i don't enjoy writing things down about what i'm knitting and i know other people really appreciate it and i really appreciate it sometimes as well when i revisit things and think oh i wish i knew what i did this with or what i did that with and i was watching i think it was the knitting traditions podcast or Maybe it wasn't. 
Oh, no, it wasn't. It was someone else. And they had said that they had seen me talking about gish watches before where I talked about doing the yarn over so you know how many... Oh, who was the podcast? Oh, it was um, Anastasia from Free Your Sheep, I think. Anyway, that inspired me to start thinking about my own gish watches and how I want to change this mess of a book. This is the Lina magazine, My Knitting Notes, which I stocked in the shop for a while. Um, yeah, so I put all my gauge swatches in here. I write a few notes, but to be honest with you, it is so, I look at that. It's so messy. I don't always block my swatches because, especially the ones that I've dyed, I know that they're not going to expand anymore because when you dye the yarn, they're yeah, they basically don't change that much. So sometimes I'm lazy and I don't, I don't, um, I don't block them again, which means they don't sit nice and flat. So my, my thing for 2021 is going to be every time that I make a gauge swatch, I'm going to make it a beautiful gauge swatch and I'm going to block it and I'm going to make it a reasonable size, not like this, which is just not good enough, clearly. And I'm going to find something better to store it in because this just isn't working for me. I had seen Melody Hoffman, I think on one of her podcasts, saying about how she actually, I think, she sews a piece of paper onto the back of the swatch and then she glues the paper on the back of the swatch to her page and she writes and does lovely little drawings and everything beside each swatch um and yeah i just love the idea of that organization but i am just not a very organized person and i hate doing admin stuff like that but i think i could come to enjoy it if it looked more beautiful and but yeah, so I don't know where I will look. I might look in, do you know Muji, the shop Muji? Might look in there for a spiral bound, bigger, like bigger than this. This is not big enough. This is only a five. Um, just so that I can have a more comprehensive overview of my gauge swatches, the needle sizes, my project notes because whenever you're sitting on the sofa and you're not near the computer or your phone sometimes you don't want to be bothered like looking stuff up like going to get your phone or going to the computer and looking stuff up you want to have your notes like right beside where you are so you so you know what you're doing next so yeah and also if I start to design more things well by more things i mean that one thing that i haven't finished yet that shawl pattern which is maybe on the cars for 2021 we'll see but yeah i know i have to be more organized and it would be very helpful if i could just kind of get that a little bit more organized and under control so if you have any tips for that or tell me what you do like leave it in the comments tell me how do you I mean, I know loads of people don't even swatch. So, but if you do swatch, I'd be really interested to know how you store your swatches. And do you write any information or do you do anything special to show, you know, like yarn overs or pearl bumps for, um, to show what needle size you used or anything like that. I'm really interested to know how you store your crazy swatches. So. I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was kind of quite fast. It was a bit of a, a fly through, but um, yeah, hope you can enjoy that and I will see you next time.
gloria in excelsis Chelsea.